Okay. We have to move on. Yeah. Moving on now. A former governor of Jigawa State, Alaji Sule Lamido, on Friday faulted the endorsement of the Labour Party presidential candidates, Peter Obi, by former President Olusegun Obasanjo, calling it a big mistake. Lamido, who was a foreign affairs minister in Obasanjo's administration, made the remarks while answering questions from newsmen at Bamena, his country home near Beninkuru local government area of Jigawa State. The former governor said Obasanjo is boss, but made was a big mistake by endorsing Peter Obi. Sule Lamido, this endorsement has been this um, the first of January letter of uh, former President Olusha Obasanjo, and endorsing the candidates of the Labour Party, and we've been seeing reactions from right, left, and centre, the, depending on the interests, you know. So, Sule Lamido now speaking, and don't forget that Sule Lamido served under. Olusha Gombasajo as Foreign Affairs Minister. Yes, many have said many things. Many have written many things about Obasanjo's uh, letter endorsing a particular candidate. Believe me, I've not been able to agree with anyone yes. fourteen Obasanjo's endorsement. This is the only person I seem to agree with to a great extent. Because when everybody was going to Obasanjo's, you know, Palacia, you know, residence, what were you looking for? Support, endorsement, one form, one way or the other. And when the, and the man has the right. But when I see, when I read Sule Lamido, it made a valid, a valid point as far as I'm concerned that Obasanjo, you said you are no longer into politics or partisan or whatever, that you are now playing the role of head of statesman. But if you know you want to jettison that and be doing politics, it has to be the PDP because that's the party that made you who you are. And that you are talking because you are a former, I mean, President of Nigeria, I am a too wrong. Everybody has a right to endorse anybody. But since you declared, nobody forced you that you now remain neutral because that's what other statesmen do. Endorsing another, I mean, a candidate from another party other than the one that made you is contradictory as far as I'm concerned. So those who are, why, why is anybody losing sleep over Obasanjo's endorsement of anybody? Why don't you look for the real people that will vote to endorse you? If I were a presidential candidate, my team will just respond that, oh, he has a right to endorse anybody, but I'm enjoying, I, I consider right to him that he has that right, but the truth is that I'm banking on the endorsement of those that matter. And who are those that matter? The ordinary folks, those that we vote. Because Nigerians ultimately will decide who will become the next president of Nigeria. And that's the beauty of democracy. But when you look at vitriolic, you know, responses from everywhere, I say, come on, why are people behaving as if we are not in a democracy? Mm -hmm. It is within the prerogative of Bolsonaro. Let him do it. People can ignore him. People can. But the way people are responding now, it's like those who said Bolsonaro is inconsequential, uh, actually are not saying the truth. <laughs> because mm -hmm. why are you losing sleep over Bolsonaro in the endorsement of Nigerians, ordinary voters, will decide the future of Nigeria, not Bolsonaro. And the president, President Buhari, has shown certain, you know, things that you must credit him. Said he will leave a legacy of free and fair election, and that he has been doing. And nobody can convince me against the fact that INEC has been improving, you know, improving and improving and improving. Of course, there is still a lot to be done, but in the elections they've been doing now, you don't see 
the presidency interfering or anybody. So that's, that, that's one good thing. Sule Lamido's position on the endorsement of um, Peter Obi. I actually find um, Sule Lamido's uh, position fundamentally, I find his logic fundamentally flawed. Uh, Obas Ojo, many years ago, we know that he tore his membership card, his PDP membership card, so he's no longer a member of PDP. Yes, PDP made him, but this, is, this will not be the first time that Obas Ojo will endorse someone off from PDP. In 2015, where he fell out of, you know, he, he and Jonathan fell out, he endorsed Wari. Though in 2019, he switched to Atiku. Now, <coughs> Obas Ojo is a Nigerian. You can't box him into a corner. You can't say, you see, your, you see your, your definition of an elder statesman may not be so definition of an elder statesman. <laughs> He's a Nigerian. You can look at the candidates and see who he believes, who he is convinced will win. You're talking about PDP made him. PDP made Tambua before he joined APC and returned to PDP. APC made Obaseki. Or oh, he's a governor under, uh, what's it, uh, PDP. You understand? We have, we have so many. If the chairman of APC today, where was he before? The chairman of APC, where was he? So the truth of the matter is, if you're talking about one party making that you must be stuck with the party that made you, then it's a joke. Because in Nigeria, we have seen so many people leave the party that made them, so to speak. Now, Abbas Ojo is one man. This is when I began to see all the reactions, reaction from um, uh, Galba Shewu, uh, reaction from a um, APC, PCC. I find all those reactions very poor. Eye. That's, that's I find them very poor. Eye. I find them nonsensical. You, all you need to, you don't need to abuse the man because he endorsed <laughs> whoever he, he felt like endorsing. The truth of the matter is that Abbas Ojo is one man. Why would you lose sleep over the man? If you know that the man cannot pull votes, if you know that the man cannot pull votes for Peter Ubi, I don't think, why are you not making the man an issue? Why is everybody now issuing statements, you know, condemning the man? It's, it's, oh, it's squalid, uh, what did they, they, they use the word squalid? And all sorts of, uh, uh, sort of uh, terms being used for the man. The man has a right to pitch his tent with anyone. The fact that he pitched his tent with um, uh, Atiku in 2019, Atiku did not win. He did not, does not mean that Obi will win because uh, Obasanjo just says, this is who I like. But that is who he likes. An ex-president comes in and the, the, the man does, misbehaves according by the way he sees it. He is going to still write letters. Even before the 25th presidential election, how are we sure that we won't see another letter? Baba <laughs> Jay, <laughs> let me get your intervention on this endorsement by Olusegun or Obasanjo. Well, um, I don't have any issue with his endorsement, but politicians have the right to attack him because he did not just stop at endorsing or adopting the candidate of his choice. He also attacked the government of the day. He called the government of the day all kinds of names. So you don't expect Garba Shehu to sit down and be looking at him. In some ways, this government did better than Obasanjo, at least in some sectors. No doubt about it. Was it not the same president whose cousin stole money in the Federal Ministry of Defense? And he directed the Ministry of Justice to discontinue his trial. So he can't sit in Abelkuta and be behaving like he's the only Puritan in our country, he's the only person who has wisdom in our country. If he continues to talk like that, of course he will be resisted. Other people will answer him. Obasanjo thinks that he can by himself determine who becomes president of our country. In 2019, or just before 2019, he quarreled with the Buhari regime. Of course, they gave it back to him and told him that, look, you cannot determine who will win the election. If you got away with it, with Jonathan, you fell out with Jonathan because they replied your letter, that was Jonathan's crime. 
that Dr. Ruben Abati replied his letter, and he was moving from point to point just to ensure that Jonathan didn't win the election. Now, the person that you have to install, you are not happy with his performance. Does it not then show to Nigerians that you misled them? If you, 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 you brought Jonathan to power, you fought him. You brought uh, Buhari to power, you fought him. You started talking about his father had a killer squad. Everyone who is sensible knew that Obasanjo enjoyed life. Just to demarket him and make sure that he didn't win the election. So, the point that Suez and Lamido is making is that PDP made you. They brought you out of Yola prison. The military had formed these parties. You didn't spend money, they, they put you in power. And you, you, you were re-elected. So as far as Suez Lamido is concerned, if he had to do favor to anyone, it ought to be the candidate of the PDP. Of course, that's so Lamido's interest, and is well within his his, uh, his uh, capacity to push. For. If you are talking about fairness, did you not attempt to do third term? Is third term fair? So I think uh, there are moral issues here. Mm. A person who cannot be described as a moral giant doesn't throw his weight around as if he's indeed a moral giant. In many ways, he is as infallible as some of the people that he's abusing. Okay, he made the point that there is no saint amongst the, the candidates. Obama John himself was not a saint. We could spend the whole program talking about justifying why he's not a saint. After all, our electoral process is much better than during his own time, when they were writing figures, when the presidential election of 2003, the uh, vote recorded in Ogun State was higher than the number of registered voters. I was at the Supreme Court where judgment was made, and the Supreme Court referred to the fact that the number that the, the, the votes returned from Ogun State in 2003 presidential election was higher than the number of registered voters. We all know that that cannot happen at this time. So what people like Sule Lamido expected from him is even-handedness, especially when you have said that you do not belong to any party. Even-handedness. Some other statesmen, like Gawan, you never see them come out openly to say they are supporting a particular candidate. You will never see Abdul Salam Abaka come out. It's not as if they don't have political preferences, but they don't publicly do it. That is Abbas on just time. He will come out to say, oh, and he usually chooses who he sees as the weakest of them all. Sule Lamido alluded to that, that he finds it difficult to forgive Atiku. He does not like Tinobu because he believes that these two individuals are so strong and that what Obasanjo likes to do in the public space, if they won the election, they will not be able to, to do it. So he has chosen a different person. But he can adopt whoever he wants. Obasanjo does not have electoral value anymore. That's it. He can diminish you with his mouth. He can grant interviews to the international press and say, oh, so so person is bad. Just the same way he did to MK Abiola and told the international press that MK Abiola was not the messiah. But by himself, he cannot make anybody win an election. Whoever does not know that does not know politics. Even in Owu, Obasanjo cannot cause a person to win an election. In the context for the traditional ruler of his village, Obasanjo could not get even the kingmakers to support his own choice. Even as a sitting president, he couldn't get the kingmakers to support his choice. And at the end of the day, when the kingmakers presented the, uh, the results, he tore the results and ate that sheet of paper. This is not fiction. This is the reality. So if you cannot even influence people within your village, 
how can you then influence who wins election in our country? People can point to the fact that, oh, he, 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 he supported Yaradwa, Yaradwa became president. But even Yaradwa came out that the election that he won was massively rigged. So what are we talking about? Hmm. What they expect from him is to sit in the middle and say, oh, these are my children. This is who, I mean, uh, uh, they should not support a particular individual. That is what those who are criticizing him are saying, especially given that he said he no longer belonged to any party. We can point to where he said that, that look, I'm done with partisan politics, this and that. But what are you doing backing a particular candidate if you are done with partisan politics? You should actually shut up. Hmm. All right, moving on.